Yo, Chuck. What the Chuck is up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to go over Shell Sort. Shell Sort is very similar to Insertion Sort, but it has an added layer of complexity. The first part of this video will be devoted to me visually explaining how shell sort works, followed by a live coding implementation. Stay tuned, this is going to be a good video. Let's dive in. So, what exactly is shell sort? So, shell sort is very much like insertion sort, just like I said. We're going to compare values, but this time we're comparing values that are further apart. Larger values are still going to bubble up, just like they would in insertion sort and an interval is created as our starting point. You'll see what I mean when I say interval when we go to the coding implementation, but initially that interval is just going to be the array length divided by two, floored. Okay, and that interval is going to dictate the distance between compared items. So the larger the interval, the farther apart we can compare items, for instance. Okay, so just like I said, here is a slide depicting how we, just, we find that interval, right? We're just going to floor the, rank, the length of the items divided by two. So here you can see we've got five items. When we divide that by two, we get 2.5. And then if we floor 2.5, we get two. Now we know our interval is two, okay? So the first slide, I am starting on my interval two and I want you to see where I is that is where we start at interval two right so we're starting right here and the current value is this four which is dictated in red we're comparing it against a five because five is the interval two away so one two and now we're at five we're gonna compare these values so we make a comparison a swap occurs because four is less than five. Okay, so then we go to the next iteration. Notice we've incremented i at this point. You can see that up here. Notice how the interval of two remains the same. And these two items of one and three are one, two spaces apart from each other. So the current value I'm looking at is three and I can, I'm comparing it to one. Is one greater than three? No so no swap will occur. Next I increment again notice I'm at i equals 4 this time and I'm comparing the current value of 2 note dictated in red and I'm comparing that with 5 because again they are interval of 1 2 apart right so is 5 greater than 2 yes it is so a swap is going to occur notice how a swap occurred but all where'd the two go well we're keeping track of the two in this current variable but we're no longer going to compare two to the fives anymore but we're gonna bubble up that five so notice how I'm bubbling up the five again this is going to make more sense when you actually see the code this is just like insertion sort just how we did with insertion sort where we bubble up the greater numbers and then at the end of the uh, for loop we are going to make that final swap. So I'm comparing two now to four. So I'm actually comparing two to four. Is two less than four? Yes, it is. So look what happens here. Five bubbles up, this is just what I was saying. And then look at index two right here. That becomes the four. And then now we have the two back here. So it's worth mentioning that we've done this and we've reached the end of the array because the array is five items long, the last index at this array is four. So look what happens in this next slide. We start at one again. Notice our interval has now decreased from two to one. What you wanna do when you run shell sort is every iteration of your uh, main outer loop, you wanna decrement the interval by itself divided by two. So if we started with a interval of two, then to uh, divide it by two would be one. But let's say your interval, interval initially was like six, then it would be three, then it would be 1.5 floored, which would be one. So you can see how um, you're just dividing your interval by two every iteration of this main outer loop, which again will make more sense when we see the code. 
but now our interval, since it's smaller, we're actually comparing items that are one uh, away from each other. So our current item is one, and we're comparing that with two. Is one less than two? Yes, it is. A swap occurs. Notice our i is still at one. Okay, next slide. i increments to two, and then now we're comparing the item of four to two. Is two less than four? Yes, it is, so this remains sorted. No swap. Next um, increment of i, we're at three now. We're going to compare the value of three to four. Is three less than four? Yes, it is. A swap occurs. Okay, and then one more time now, we're at i equals four, and we're going to compare four and five. Is four less than five? Yes, it is. So we know the array is sorted. Um, when we actually run the code, you'll see that we're going to, once we reach the end every time of the loop, we're dividing that interval by two. Uh, but once the interval hits zero or less than zero, we're just gonna stop. So it's never going to get any less than one. That's worth mentioning. But yes, that will sort the array. So now that I've kind of explained the visual picture of how shell sort works, let's hop over to the coding implementation. And then also, I'm going to leave a link to this slideshow in the description. So if you wanna go back and like visually check out how this sorting process works, you can see that. Okay, let's hop over to the code. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a function called shell sort. It's going to take an unsorted array. I'm gonna return that array and then I'm going to just console out the function call. Let's use the array of 51432. Save that. Let's run this code. Okay, so we're just returning that array. So the first thing you need to do with shell sort is we need to determine that interval, right? So I'm gonna make a for loop. I'm going to um, declare a variable called interval, and I'm going to set it to the floor value of array.length divided by two. Now, as long as interval is greater than zero, just like I said in the slideshow, we must never be at zero or less for our interval. Then I want to set interval equal to the floor of itself divided by two. That is going to divide interval by itself every iteration by two, right? So, okay, so now that we have that logic, we need to come in here and we need to make an inner for loop. So I'm gonna say for, make a variable called i. This is just like the i in the slideshow. I'm going to set it equal to interval at start. And then as long as i is less than array.length, I'm going to increment i. So we're gonna start at our interval, which is two, so that's index two. So I'm starting at four, and then I'm gonna to go to three, then two. That's why we're starting with inter i equals interval, okay? So if I was just to return array at i, for instance, that should be four, and it is, okay? So that makes sense. Now I need to make that current value, which is the value I'm going to compare other values to. So I'm gonna say let current equal array at i. Okay, then I'm going to make a for loop or a while loop. You could do either one. I kind of like doing a while loop because it reminds me of insertion sort. This is basically in this block right here is gonna be the insertion sort logic. So if you saw my insertion sort video, you can kind of see where this is going. So I'm gonna say while j is greater than or equal to zero. So basically j must be a valid index. And I'm actually going to uh, make the variable j and set it equal to i. So at, at the start, j is actually going to be equal to the interval, but it's going to increase just like the, the interval would increase, right? 
So inside my while loop, I'm going to say while j is greater than or equal to zero, so it's pretty much a valid index, and array at j minus interval is greater than current. So this is the code that really matters, right? Because this is the code that, that is comparing our current value, which for starters is going to be that 4, and then the um, value to, the, to its left, or its, uh, its paired value, that's separated by the interval. In this case, that would be 5. So the first swap is actually going to, we want to swap 4 and 5 because 5 is greater than current. R recall that current is 4 initially, and array at j minus interval is going to be 5, right? Okay, so if that happens, we want to decrement j equal to the interval. And then we also need to bubble up that value. So I'm going to say array at j equals array at j minus interval because I'm going to bubble up that value of 5 initially. And I'm going to put it right here. And then once we exit out of this while loop, then we need to set the four equal to this position right here. Because right now, with this code, I just have this, right? I bubbled up that five value right here. This is the bubbling up of the five. And now I need to set the four back to right here. So what I'm going to do is just say array at j equals that current value. So let's actually put this back to where it was. Okay, so I'm going to return the array, and let's see what happens. And you can see it's sorted. Let's add in some other numbers to make sure, see if we can break it. Something like that. And it's still sorted. Okay, good. So I think there's a couple things to uh, mention here. Like I said before, this is just like insertion sort. The only difference is you have this outer for loop with the interval logic that's going to decrease and run that interval um, uh, decrement every time. So this logic in here is very similar to insertion sort, almost like verbatim, right? Like you recall that while loop, or you could do a for loop here as well, that is, um, it's checking for a valid index. And then remember this comparison right here, this is comparing the item to its tandem or I don't want to say adjacent because they're not technically side by side with each other until the interval reaches one, but let's just say tandem value that we compare in the first interval or the first iteration of the loop, it would be four compared to five, for instance, and then you make that swap. So that is all there is to shell sort. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.